She-Hulk for anyone other than a Twitter Marvel stan is a hot mess. I used to think that being funny anyone could do. Well, now I understand that humor is actually a talent. Each episode for me is a test of endurance. I feel less pressure doing bench presses knowing full well that if I drop the weight I will die alone in my apartment with a hole in my ceiling as my legacy that I will leave behind. Well, She-Hulk started off this week with suspiciously Twitter heavy promotion. Tweets that were going viral left and right from accounts that literally had like 500 followers. It made no sense. It stunk of botting. Maybe Daddy Elon was right not to buy the dirty little blue bird. Well, anyway, the big thing was She-Hulk twerking for female empowerment. Modern day feminism has Down syndrome. From Marvel fans have an odd obsession with female heroes' bodies to the next week She-Hulk is twerking with a rapper. I don't know about y'all, but I'd smash. It's ironic. While Marvel stands defended it to the hilt, this was the hill they were going to die on. A poorly animated woman shaking her ass. Uh, like, for me, I've always, I've had a deeply internalized misogyny about femininity. <gasps> Oh my God, you go girl. You may remember Megan Thee Stallion. You probably don't. I know I didn't know who the hell she was. Well, anyway, she's most famous for the video called WAP with Cardi B. Now, I remember this because I was demonetized at the time for talking about Twitch Dot while the official YouTube page called WAP a female empowerment song of the year. Welcome to Clown World. And I quote, WAP from Cardi B featuring Megan Three Stallions was definitely the most empowering song of 2020. Even if you don't like this song, the message is clear. Women are amazing and powerful. Let's read a few lyrics from this very empowering song for women. I'm talking WAP, 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 WAP. That's some wet ass gushy. Macaroni in a pot. That's some wet ass gushy. Huh? Out in public, make a scene. Don't cook, I don't clean. But let me tell you, I got this rang ang. Nothing says female empowerment like sexual favorites for money. Women have been taught to disregard their bodies. They're continuously taught to degrade, to diminish, and insult their own bodies. But it's sold under feminism activism and my body my choice she there is it. nothing feminine Not or feminist about treating your body like a trash can stop allowing them to degrade you insult you and belittle you under the guise of activism and equality i was subjected to she hawks interviews so now you have to see them too blame my female lead designer for this cringe you're about to receive the same consciousness and to stay herself throughout this transformation says so much about how she, as a human woman, has moved through the world and how she's dealt with her emotions and how she's had to repress them or push them down or control them. And also the 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 address to camera, while it's just also funny and like fun to bring people in, it's also a wink to her hyper-consciousness. She's so aware of all of the mechanisms in play around her and where she fits into them. And to me, that's like this amazing double meta thing that that the show is doing that feels very resonant to me and very kind of like yeah like wow. very alive as a, as a woman as you can see tatiana offered up a bunch of word salad that explained to you absolutely nothing after watching this interview a quote from hamlet came to mind it is a poor player that struts and frets his hour upon the stage then is heard no more is a tale told by an idiot of sound and fury signifying nothing. You can just feel that a woman was at the helm of this show, which is different. The constant reminder that the show is headed by a female writing team isn't a flex. The last female writing team I watched that was this bad was literally High Guardian Spice. We are 50% female in all the creative roles and our writer's room is 100% female. Ooh. Episode 3 of She-Hulk starts off with a needless recap. I guess they know the fan base for the show has attention deficit disorder. Or they have the attention span of Goldfish, whichever one you feel's funnier. Or maybe it's just padding. I mean, let's face it, each episode is 22 minutes long. 
And still, even for 22 minutes, the show feels like it's thin on plot or point to exist. I mean, granted, Seinfeld was a show about nothing, but somehow they made it work. I'm watching a show about nothing and I say to myself, this is nothing. Wong and his internet presence is a little chaotic. He's either a sorcerer who lives in New York or a librarian who lives in Nepal. Well, time for some peak comedy. Marvel superheroes now have LinkedIn pages. What was once just attributed to local douchebag and tech professionals you don't want to be bothered with now is used on Marvel superheroes, which I guess is perfect if you're deconstructing the hero. This is to be expected for modern writing because modern writers aren't Tolkien. If they can't write a series that's a self-insert or they base it on the world in which they live in, they're all adrift with no ideas. What if the, the Avengers had LinkedIn pages? Who comes up with this? Someone who's not funny nor interesting or talented. That's who. Jesus Christ. LinkedIn for the Avengers. Sorry, Fluffy ran off of my bottle of Pico Sweat. Can you get to him? Yes, Jen, it's me. Of course I can get to him. I sent a thirst trap. It was a picture of me with a bunch of books. <laughs> Kill me, please. I want to die. This is side-splitting humor. This is the sort of humor you can only get from years of training. I oh, in the speech and debate team in high school. Oh, you yeah. Were? I was fourth in the nation for impromptu speaking, which is probably why I'm an improviser. <laughs> yeah, you were one of the draw. I was original oratory, extemp, and LD debate. Extemp and LD? <laughs> oh my God, I could go on. Listen, that's all I want to talk about now, but. <laughs> what a charming story. She Hulk's fourth wall breaks don't really feel good. You know what I'm saying? As much as I dislike Ryan Reynolds, I have to admit he pulls it off with Deadpool. Whereas doing She Hulk, it's uncomfortable. You know, like people staring to the camera when you're watching porn trying to have a wank. You watch your box of tissues. What are you on about? Because I want in a wank. After our wonderful groundbreaking fourth wall break chit chat with Jen Walters, we are treated to a great clip where She-Hulk writers poke fun at YouTubers, commentators, and Twitter replies. Took a shot at anyone who questioned the direction of the MCU or She-Hulk. On the other hand, Twitter Marvel stance thought this was a truly sick burn. I had a good laugh myself. Whoa, people who don't like She-Hulk are misogynist. Oh man, what are they gonna think of next to call me? An incel? A chud horror of horrors? He doesn't get laid is the next thing they'll say. These insults are as empty as their thought processes. Also, I have to say, did the CGI take a step backwards in episode 3? Like, what is going on here? Well, really, it's $25 million an episode. And She-Hulk at times, depending on the lighting in the episode, goes from looking acceptable to looking like something someone made a mashup on YouTube with. Now, by the way, the character of Dennis, I am tired of. I guess this is what feminist humor thinks is funny. A highly misogynistic white lawyer which I guess is an allegory for the patriarchy in human form. Every time he shows up, he's degrading women, or he's incompetent, or he's just stupid on a cartoonish level. Mm, we have too much history for me to be comfortable with her on the case. I would love to know what this is about and not work on it. You wanted to see me? Ah, yes, Mallory Book is also in the superhuman lot of it. Yeah. No, I can't talk to a 10 about embarrassing man stuff. She could be my next fiance. Happy to not be involved. Be a lawyer? It looks cool. So, seriously, how did you get these powers? I really don't feel like talking about it. Nepotism. You knew it. Oh, take a lap, Dennis. There's a hot chick over there. I'm gonna go talk to it. Look, obvious bad male character. Ugh, ugh, this is how men see women. Ugh, they're just objects for the male gaze. For example, this idea of the male gaze, and they use this that's, you know, woman is treated as object passive. It's Laura Mulvey's agent. idea. Exactly. From the 1970s, okay? And it, it, it absolutely, it, it just uh, polluted film criticism. And Laura Mulvey is a very nice person. I've met her at the British Film Institute in, in London. I think she's but she changed knows, a little but bit. But she knows it. nothing about the visual arts. Anyway, Dennis the Annoying Lawyer is fleeced out of money by a shape-shifting light elf from New Asgard. 
that posed as the female rapper Cardi B, Megan Three Stallion. Oh my God, this plot is so stupid, dude. Eh. Wow, Dennis. Okay, well, to be fair, I thought I was dating Megan The Stallion. I'm sorry, what? Sorry, you thought you were dating Megan The Stallion? A multiple Grammy Award winner, megastar Megan The Stallion? What part? <laughs> hey, hey, who turned out the gas? Oh, a pigeon, just take a damn antidepressant like the rest of us. Yeah, well, if any of you are really my friends, you'd let me die in peace. Eh. I'm going back in the oven. With the way they talked to Mega 3 Stallion in the show, by the cast and interviews and so on, you would have thought she had more talent than all the Beatles combined. Listen, Led Zeppelin 4, it has nothing on WAP, my dudes. She's a multi-Grammy award winner. I'm like, really? Huh. I guess a Grammy is like a YouTube play button, completely meaningless in this day and age. They should have got Nicki Minaj. Her assistant allegedly exposed her for owing $200 million in taxes to the government, so I bet Nicki would have been real cheap. I know, you can't wait to see Wong. I get it. Wong is in the episode, and I don't care. I don't care about any of this. Each episode of She-Hulk feels like a further descent into cringe. I just watched $20 million burn for 22 minutes. I love harassing women in the workplace. It's my kick, baby. Not cool. Let that be a war. I don't. You guys know me. Oh, look. It's the light elf using her power to get a man in trouble for sexual harassment because nothing is funnier than false allegations that ruin successful men's lives. Am I right? Ha ha ha! Oh my god, I hate this job some days. Remember, with great power comes great power. Let that be a warning. The episode has a few hollow court cases that would make a writer from L.A. Law vomit in their mouth. Well, Dennis wins his case against Megan 3 Stallion or whatever, and she shows up randomly to let everyone know that she's the only Megan Stallion. And then she starts sticking her tongue out. Like, every time she's on screen, she's like, ugh, 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 ugh. My dog keeps her tongue in her mouth longer, even when we're running through the park. I guess this is some sort of trademark. In a moment, I'm sure Kevin Feige would call an absolute triumph of cinema. There's also a pointless fight with She-Hulk, with dudes who stole as guardian construction worker gear, and then they attacked her to get her DNA, obviously for a plot point that will be later revealed in a cliffhanger that I can already tell you I don't care about. Interest level exceeded. Don't worry. Then we got our internet sensation scene. The moment where She-Hulk is twerking and made history according to Jamila Jamil that will be memed on for years to come. I foresee a future where She-Hulk is shaking her ass in the background of every world event and tragedy. I got nothing after that. I was gonna go into a whole Blade Runner sort of speech and I just said to hell if it, I hate this video already. I mean, I live in a world where Megan Three Stallion is a celebrity and Thomas Stowell is little known. Welcome to Black America. I hope you enjoyed that moment in female empowerment. It's up there with the suffragettes in relevance. I'm sure women of the future will look back at this moment and say to themselves, this was my emancipation when She-Hulk was twerking with Megan Three Stallions. I give She-Hulk episode three a 1.4. The constant reliance on cameos is a clear sign that the show can't keep its own head above water and needs a life preserver in the form of member berries. I'm extra critical of She-Hulk today because I watched Gantt Zero on Netflix. I haven't seen this movie in years and on a budget that I'm 100% sure is less than She-Hulk's $25 million per episode, which if you add it all together, eight to 10 episodes, oh my God, that's a lot of money. Well, anyway, Gantz was made back in 2016 and it features more realistic CGI in some cases. And it's that old. By the way, the story is fantastic. After watching Gantz Zero, I wanted to be a better human. After watching She-Hulk, Felt like I wasted my life. Now I see why the drinker drinks. Go away now.